used in um, Afterlife, season one, to great effect. <laughs> How are ya? Um, I hope you're bearing up with all this shit. It's not even, it's not even all this shit, is it? It's all the uncertainty. That's what really gets me down. Maybe I'm, I don't know, maybe I've got some sort of OCD, but even in normal times, if I've planned everything, if something goes wrong or someone says, oh, I can't, I'll go, f- f- cancel it. <laughs> cancel it all. I've never done anything ever again. If I book a flight, right, and they go, oh, it's uh, an hour delayed. Right. Never. <laughs> yeah, you're never going to work again. Um, just everything's up in the air. You can't look forward to anything. You can't, I can't put gigs in. I can't, I mean, I finished my tour just in the nick of time. Um, uh, that would have been terrible to cancel all those again after postponing them all. Uh, but yeah, we just don't know what's happening. All the pressure to for Christmas. Do you know the worst thing is as well? A- apart from the pandemic and the devastation and the and the deaths and the strain on the health service and people losing their livelihoods and that. The worst thing is the fucking cunts in charge do what they want. And you know what, I can, I can, you know, I see all these people saying all, all the parties they were having and what, what all the stuff they were doing. And people saying, you know, that was the day I couldn't see my mum in hospital or I couldn't go to my dad's funeral. And because the people in charge, the posh, privileged people in charge were acting like fucking Charlie Sheen. I mean, really fucking rubbing salt in the wound. As I say, I don't get political, but they're all shit. When are we going to stop taking went to Eton as a qualification to run the country? I mean, fucking hell. <laughs> oh. So that's why I'm doing this as well, because I've noticed all around, you know, there's a lot of um, annoyance and frustration, totally justified as well. Misinformation, uh, anger. Um, but I think the next pandemic is going to be like anxiety and depression, you know. God knows what it, how it affects like teenagers who have had their, you know, some of the best years of their life sort of taken away. And college. I didn't go to college to study. <laughs> you know what I mean? Three years, three years living at home, doing things on Zoom. That's not my idea. That's not my idea of a college experience. Um, so, as I say, I can't complain. I'm, I, I'm definitely in a privileged position. And, but I, I do notice, I, do, I, I have noticed that it's getting a lot of people down. So, um, and this, this, you know, helps me, like, you know, when you can't do stuff, you think, well, I've got to do something. We're built like that. We, we've got to do something. You know, it, it's, um, so this is, this helped me doing this, just, you know, talking bollocks, <laughs> answering questions from cats and dogs. <laughs> yeah, my world tour was postponed for a year, but I did talk to a lot of cats and dogs. Um, yeah, okay, well, I hope you're, you're bearing up and, um, uh, here's some questions. Keena, what are you watching over the Christmas break? Any recommendations? Thanks, Keena. Well, I don't think I've watched terrestrial TV or anything in English for about two years. Um, I just go through, uh... You know, Netflix, Walter Presents, uh, Amazon, Hulu, iTunes. You know, I, I just find the best, the very best sort of dramas from around the world. And, and so I'm spoiled now. Like, I watch things now. And like, a couple of years ago, I watched something. I go, that was great. And now I watch it and go, that's not great. Because I've seen what great is. You know, so um, 
uh, we probably watch less telly. There's no flicking round. We know we look for someone and we watch it. And uh, uh, I, I don't know what to recommend. I don't know what's on telly over Christmas. I don't think there is anything on fucking telly over Christmas, is there? I mean, um, it's, not, it's not like it was, grumpy old man. <laughs> <laughs> no more common wise or <laughs> but you know what I mean I don't um, so watch uh, uh, Four Blocks Gamora The Bridge if you haven't seen it all in their own language never dubbed always um, with subtitles uh, Caliphate um, uh, oh, oh, uh, When the Dust Settles uh Oh, what else is there? Go back and watch classics if you haven't watched them. Sopranos, The Wire. Uh, yeah, um, Vikings. If you want a bit of escapism. Uh, so yeah, Curb Enthusiasm. Right, uh, Ollie Afterlife. What's the worst thing you could get Jane for Christmas? And what's the worst thing she could get you? Um, the first thing I thought of that you get me would be a novel just the idea of like oh I've got to read a novel <laughs> just like war and peace fucking hell <laughs> homework <laughs> um, that's the thing those, those gifts that I think we've talked about this when someone gets you a gift and it's like well, that's, that's like a job now. Like, um, oh, 10 lessons, potholing. Fuck off. I'm not going to go potholing. People die down there. They're spiders. Why am I doing that? Why am I doing something fucking dangerous? Get me a, a crate of wine. There's no, you can't go wrong with that. All, all my family know that. I, 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 my family get me... Uh, booze and black t-shirts and pants spot on it's exactly right that's what <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong with that what's the worst thing I get Jane um, oh tickets to I've got, I don't know if this exists but this would be the worst this would be Jane's worst nightmare tickets to audience participation improv comedy <laughs> that would be like <laughs> that would yeah last year I got a a bell that I ding <laughs> it was pecked <laughs> it dings down here <laughs> half joke but it's useful um <laughs> Uh, Sue, so, do you miss being a DJ? Yeah, I do. This is sort of like that. That's why I do this, really. Play a tune, have a chat. Would you ever do another radio show or podcast where you talk about music and play your favourite tracks? Yeah, I'd love to. I had an idea that I could do a show on Spotify where I could just mention songs. They've all got them. They've got all the songs. Mention it. Play the song. So it'd be like... And I just add to that, and so soon you'd have Ricky Gervais' playlist of me talking and doing shit like this between them, but a thousand songs. Uh, then I never got round to pitching it. So if, if anyone's watching <laughs> from Spotify, I'll do that. And I, you, you know, be good, wouldn't it? Around the world, there if you want it. I've I've got impeccable music taste. A little story about it, a little joke here and there, a little bit of advice. Not too much. You could skip that as well. You could have it skip if you didn't like it. But the music, honestly, you'd never look back. If I if I gave you my top thousand songs, you'd it would change your life. <laughs> um, Julia. Does anything about Christmas really annoy you? Well, something about everything really annoys me. Something 
I could I could be in my element. I could be sitting on a a deserted beach, right, watching the sunset, right? Little crabs running round, right? Drinking pina colada from a coconut. And I just think, I think this is amazing. And then some cunt would come and sit too near me sniffing. Ruin it. So, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. So, uh, I, I hate the pressure. I, I, I always hate the pressure of that thing up Christmas. Like, I always worry that people put too much onus on Christmas. Like, it has to be perfect. And then when it isn't, it, you know, it ruins their year. I think that about people going on holiday, like families going on holiday and arguing because they put too much pressure on how important this one week is. You know, you hear the thing like, you know, oh, yeah. Same as weddings. People spend like a year's wages on a wedding. Just because they, they, they think they should. Don't worry about it. It's just a day. Christmas is lovely, but don't worry about it. It's just a day. You know. <laughs> Grinch. <laughs> Grinch, but not, not green. Red and puffy. <laughs> um, well, nothing about Christmas really annoys me, really. Sometimes I, I, I want it over so I can get back to normal, but there isn't any normal now. So, I mean, it really is just another day of the year, isn't it? Christmas at the moment. Um, but yeah, usually you do Christmas think, oh, can't wait to get back to work. Uh, and I hope there's no kids. I hope there's no kids watching because I've said the C word as well. <laughs> I apologise. People are eating their tea. Fucking slagging off the government, Christmas, just life in general. <sighs> Welsh Felix, what do you want for Christmas? Besides a working jetpack. Yeah, it's still number one. Still number one. Just off. Whenever I say to Jane, oh, there's a new drone you can sit in, right? It's, um, it's, a, it's a million pounds, but there's, she, she, she just goes dead immediately. Just like, like, <laughs> like she didn't find me wrapped round a pylon. He died. When did he get this? She go this morning. Well, he's dead. Yeah, 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 I know. I knew he would be. I told him. I said, I, I knew when he was going to say he's going to spend a million pounds on it, I, I said that he'd be dead by this afternoon. And there he is, hanging. <laughs> you know, that's number one, the jetpack. You know. Peace and quiet, more and more. Peace and quiet. Just want peace and quiet. That's what, I just want peace and quiet. I mean, to the extent that, I, I don't know. I just want, I, I want to know what I'm doing. When I know I've got a night in, or... I know everything that's, that's happening, right? And then when I've got to work and when I've got to relax. And then if, if I've got, oh, great, like Netflix. I've got a night off, a bottle of wine, Netflix, this. Someone, someone calls and says, oh, we're in town, do you want to do dinner? I'm oh, fucking out. I wish I was dead. <laughs> Only death can get me out of this. <laughs> um, uh... I don't want. I don't want anything really. Because peace and quiet. Yeah, peace and quiet. Everyone to be happy. Everyone to have a good Christmas. More and more now, you worry that like, other people's misery spoils it for you. That's an age thing, isn't it? Um, when you can be happy, and then you can see one thing like oh, like a terrible fucking story on the news or a bit of animal cruelty, it just ruins ruins your fucking day, doesn't it? You think oh, I can't enjoy. I can't enjoy myself now because I've got to sort I've got to sort that out I've got to save that dog <laughs> um, that's why I do everything peace and quiet I want it right if I do that I can have peace and quiet uh, Gunner what one thing would you wish Santa to bring that you could have you could not have as a kid train set bike BB gun yeah, I don't think I did have a train set. I couldn't, couldn't really afford those big ones. Um, I might have had a, a little, a pathetic one, but 
never really had a bike apart from a you know a tiny one when I could ride a real bike I, I couldn't afford a you know I got a second hand one once when I was about 14 bought it for two quid off someone they nicked it I'm pretty sure they nicked it no brakes no brakes right so I always planned that if ever like a car was in front of me that I'd I'd go onto the pavement Right, I'd planned that, right, because I, I was well, 14, mental, just mental, you know, don't care about fucking brakes. And uh, it happened, it happened with a bus, right? I was bombing along, and this bus overtook me and stopped at um, a stop. And I thought, oh, do your plan, go onto the pavement. And I went onto the pavement, and I hit it, and I just went fucking flying. It wasn't a good plan. You should have brakes on a bike. <laughs> That's my advice. You live and learn, don't you? Always have brakes. Always have brakes, kids. And a helmet. No one had helmets then either. Always have a helmet. Always have. Always have brakes. Always have a helmet. Don't. Don't go for that plan that I had. Didn't work. <laughs> um, what would I want? Uh, BB gun. Uh, did I have an air? I, I don't think I had a... Uh, I had I'd spud guns and things like that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been allowed an air pistol. Not in a million years when I was a kid. I told my best friends it was a beauty. Yeah. I'd have that now. It's a beauty, it's a great game. Is it though? As I've played it in adult, it's good. It still is good. It is good. I love that gunner. It's a beauty. Um, I should buy shares in Subutio, shouldn't I? I should, before, I, before I say all these things, or I get like 50 grand for saying it, like Kardashians do. I, I do it all free. I've been a mug. Um, vampire squirrel. If you ever end up being tortured, why would you, why would you start a question with that? If you ever end up being tortured, what phobia do you have that would make you spill every bean? I've only got one phobia, spiders. But being tortured's bad already, isn't it? So I'm being tortured. I've got electrodes on me ghoulies. They're pouring fucking water on my face with a towel. Punch me, right? And then it wouldn't get to the spider. It wouldn't... That's not... That's not I've got a phobia of pain. I've got a rational fear of pain. So, yeah. Imagine being taught. Imagine, right, being caught, right, as a spy or something, right? And they, they've tied you to a chair, and he comes in like that, like that. And I go, is that a fucking spider? They go, yeah. I go, right, I'll tell you, the, right, the secrets, I'll tell you the secrets. Just put that, put that outside, and I will tell you everything I know. I wouldn't... <laughs> I'd crumble straight a fucking way. Um, <laughs> Trent Bren, in your amazing writing, thank you, are you aware of your viewers' expectations or does your writing dictate and lead? Yeah, the writing always... I never second-guess an audience. I never worry about what they might think. I, I try and be interested and, you know... Um, you use all your, uh, all the things you've learned, it all goes in, you sort of do it intuitively and then you structure it to be as good as you can. I've only done one thing where I was aware that I even felt a duty and that was, um, uh, if I tell you, would it be a spoiler alert? Um, so, so, right, when I first, when I did the first series of Afterlife, loads of people came up to me, more than ever before, and said, 
that they loved Afterlife and that they'd lost someone, you know, and you realise that everyone's grieving. And uh, 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 and it was really lovely that it touched on that. Then I, like a few times, I've talked to people who are, who might be therapists or, you know, they work in uh, you know, uh, crisis centres and stuff. And they said that sometimes they use Afterlife for people who might be depressed or grieving or suicidal. And um, uh, they said it was, a, you know, a good thing and inspirational and everything. And one of them said, oh, um, please don't let Tony kill himself. So that, so I I took that on board because I felt I felt a responsibility. And um, and I don't, I, I, I don't usually, but... Uh, that 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 sort of got to me. So um, I I did, I I did, worry about viewer expectations about that 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 one thing. And in general, I don't do, you know, I I I don't do things that I think are, you know, terribly irresponsible or, or you know, undermine the moral fabric of society. But I do deal in taboo subjects and I do deal in dark areas, and you know, that's not the same. I don't think. Um, so, uh, I hope that answers your question. Uh, Kanida, what five things in your life bring you excitement, joy, and warm your heart when you're feeling a bit gloomy? Did you use these activities to get through the doldrums of the last two COVID rife years? Uh, that's, that's, that's interesting. Um, lots of things, really. I don't know what, how, to, how to categorise them. So the first thing that sprung to mind was dogs, and dogs got me through this pandemic. If do if you weren't allowed to, if you had to social distance from dogs, I'd be in trouble. I go for a walk every day. I talk about this in my uh, supernature. I go for a walk every day. I know hundreds of dogs by name, and you always meet a few of your little friends, and that sets me up for the day. Um, so dogs give me joy. Just without doubt. Uh, sitting at home, just sitting at home, you know, the ritual of on the couch with wine, just me and Jane and the cat watching Netflix. As I said, and someone says, we're in town. Oh, fuck, I'm ill. <laughs> uh, creating, creating stuff, having an idea. I'm always, that always excites me and then planning it and fucking planning. Planning's out the window, isn't it? Uh, achieving something, achieving, having one idea, writing one joke, um, coming up with a title for something, just just achieving something. Uh, and that can be anything. That doesn't need to be a concept for a movie. That can be tidying your fucking house up. Just, just achieving something, you know what I mean? I hate it when I've waited for something to happen and couldn't do anything and then you realise you've wasted the day. That really, going for a run. I went to the gym today, it didn't feel like it, but I thought, oh, I've, it annoyed me. So I went. Um, uh, um, more and more doing something with my money, charity work, doing something, you know, seeing it, just seeing it make a difference. Um, I think that's why you should give to small charities as well, because you see, you see the difference. It means something to them, and you see results. And I, I give to big charities as well, but it sort of gets lost. Um, like even even the admin costs. Whereas if you if you if you know a local charity, and they're a small sort of concern, that pound, the whole pound, goes to helping them cats and dogs or kids or whatever um so that you i like i like that that's good i feel like i've done some that peace and quiet i love peace and quiet now for about a minute then i get bored <laughs> <laughs> i might have some condition i, I want to do whatever i'm not doing unless it's someone else's idea then i want you to carry on doing what I was doing. <laughs> oh, God. This 
this is like this is like a therapy session, isn't it? You are my therapists, and you're not qualified. <laughs> I hope this is good for you as well. Uh, I don't just do it for me. <laughs> uh, Louise, if you were working in a cracker factory... Oh, well, yeah. I assume, yeah. In charge of the little jokes, that wouldn't be good, would it? What's the kind of material you'd put in there for a family Christmas dinner? It would be tempting, wouldn't it? It would be immediately tempting to put in the ones that Kev did for Derek. I don't know if I can repeat them, but yeah. Or wisdom. Or wisdom that meant that meant nothing. Like, you know, that fake Zen nonsense. Or don't be a twat. That would be my a little fortune cookie. Don't be a twat. Anyway, we getting, wouldn't it be great if it was really specific? Do you know what I mean? Like, they opened it, and it went, Sandra, everyone here fucking hates you. She'd go, what? <laughs> the chances are, you might, you might get the name right. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Do that. Do that for your family things. Put the people's names in. Type it. So they go, fuck it now. <laughs> Gerald stop being a fucking stingy twat get your nephews better presents next time you toss up be really specific <laughs> oh god um, right one last question Ricky you're in a life and death situation of course this is boy wonder uh You've been captured by rogue scientists. Now, this is going to end up good, isn't it? You have the choice of having 20 penises surgically attached to your face and head. Right. Okay. Well, it's the next one. Isn't it? Whatever the next one is. Or 20 eyeballs. What do you choose? This is life or death, so please choose now. Well, neither of them are great, but I'm not going to have 20 knobs on my face. <laughs> I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Because <laughs> oh. also, where they, that's other people's knobs, isn't it? That is a knob. That is... No. Definitely, um, the eyeballs aren't fucking great, but I'm not going to have... Like, also, are they functioning? Have I just got knobs going off? On my face. Can I, can I see the, at the eyes? That would be confusing as well, wouldn't it? Because I haven't got the right brain for it. I'm not a fly. So I'd have... It, right, whatever the scenario, it's the eyes. Whether, they, whether they're useful or not. 20 eyeballs just hanging up. Or are they like that? Like, just like they looking out. Like a spider. I'm not going to have knobs. I'm not going to have knobs. It's the eyes. Give me the eyes. Who would choose knobs? Someone. Someone somewhere would choose knobs over eyeballs. But I, I don't know if we I don't know if that person would ever exist. Or admit it. Uh, right. I mean, that was a load of, say bollocks, it was a load of cock. Um, thanks for your questions. Thanks for your questions for the Sam Harris podcast as well. I've, uh, I've uh, mentioned a few of you, actually. Some of the questions have got through, amazingly. Um, we nearly uh, finished recording the third series. Uh, that's what you can do for me. That's what I want for Christmas. Everyone download the first two seasons of Absolutely Mental. Go to absolutelymental.com and, uh, and you can gift a friend. You might say, get them listening. 20, what is it? I don't know. 20 hours? I don't know. But it's good. 
and, and more and more it's sort of self help and advice and and uh, and fun and science. So uh, do that. Um, right. Have a good time. Tatty bye, everyone. Be nice to animals. Tatty bye.